cheer up Purdue. Boiler up. Look at this. I was really, I, I, I felt bad watching the Tennessee Purdue game. It was like watching two fan bases, both of them waiting for something bad to happen. Yeah. And you kind of right. just wanted it for both of them. You just were like, mm. oh, man, really? Yeah. Like one, they both were great teams and they both deserved it. But I, so no, no, nothing against Tennessee because I'd be saying the same thing. You guys are very passionate, underrated, passionate fans as Tennessee basketball. They got that huge stadium yeah. and they fill it. Yeah. It's they not just it. football at Tennessee. No. But Purdue fan has been loyal. Ha, they love basketball. They're from Indiana. They everything, right? And Purdue, it's just this, it's this really good academic school that sort of just like I, I remember uh oh there's a great like there's an old Dan Jenkins bit like it's not one of these cool out schools like Michigan or Northwestern and you're like you know you're you they're, they're they're so humble they trip over thick carpet and they had they had this whole line about Purdue like great place to become an astronaut but you know <laughs> what good is that um it's just this place they just love basketball and they've had their thing and they finally are getting there for what well, was first time since 80. Um, and so it's a loyal. I always I, generally when I'm watching the NCAA basketball tournament, I root for the basketball school. Right. Right. So if it's like the team that's just a football school and then they kind of just invented ba- They just got into basketball and they're playing Villanova. I'm like, go Villanova. This is your thing. Right. Or or whatever. Butler or whatever. So but Purdue is a basketball school. Sure. Her is not a football one. Um, and so, uh, getting to the final four, finally, there is a West Lafayette. I will, I will retire the, there is no West Lafayette gambit. You, you're going to have to win a national title before I even reconsider this drum going along with the drum line. (laughs) Maybe they'll bring uh, the drum baby steps. They they won't because they'll they'll be ashamed to admit you got to look at that drum and go, no, 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 no. I've been to, I hope they bring the drum and park it outside. Oh, wait, you're not going, are you? We could park it outside your hotel room. The Korean drum can't. You can't. You can't bring the Korean drum anywhere. It's too big to bring. (laughs) It's like bringing an air aircraft carrier. How would you get it here, Dan? I am tired of hearing about this Korean drum. All right, (laughs) enough. (laughs) Enough about the damn Korean drum. Look it up. Look it up. Even Zach Eady couldn't get a get get a hook shot over that thing. (laughs) I will say. So I'm I'm in Detroit for the games here, and I was just got back to the hotel, was come getting in the lobby, getting on the elevator. Guy, Purdue fan, hey, love the pod. I told him we're going up to going up to tape upstairs. Mm. We're gonna make this dude's day. I mean, well, probably Purdue making the Final Four will make his day. But Dan <laughs> has acknowledged that West Lafayette is there real. Go. The breakthrough. So this is this is like all kinds of wins piling up for. Uh, I, I have for reconsidered my position, and it there is a West Lafayette, Indiana. How about that? There you go. Huge. I love watching Zach Eady. I I know everyone's oh. all over him for the uh the three second calls. Uh, I don't know what how they miss those. Uh, the fouls I'm not as upset about, but there's definitely some six and seven second three second calls. But this kid just he just is so he plays so quiet. He he's so he's so effective. He's he, he there's a purpose to every move he makes. He never gets tired. Uh, he never really seems to get like, you know, he played every minute, but like 33 seconds in that game. Um, he's not bad at the free throw line. He's staring at the I just love the way he carries himself and the way they just, hey, we got him. You don't. We're going to go into him and into him and into him. 40 points, man. Incredible day for him. 40 points, 16 rebounds, 39 minutes and 27 seconds, I believe, of playing time. Seven foot four, 300. And you play that long. That's unbelievable. I mean, that is stamina you don't see from guys that size. And yes, he has composure. He has intelligence. He has patience. He also has an absolute ticker of a warrior, man. That dude plays really hard. How many times does he get on the floor for loose balls today? When you're seven four oh. 300, it's a long way down to the floor. Yeah. But he got there. I mean, he battled and battled and battled. And, you know, he's the two-time national player of the year, and this was his best game probably he's ever played. Uh, and... Yes, I, I, I do. I enjoy watching him play, too. And he drives the fans crazy, and he's really hard to officiate. Um, I'll give a hat tip. Dane O'Neill from The Athletic did a great story on the difficulty of officiating Edie. Talked to a bunch of refs, current and former. And a lot of them said he actually gets fouled more than gets called as opposed to the other way around. Mm. It is more a case of 
maybe he's been fouled more often than than he's the one getting away with calls. So, um, and he's just he is he bends the game, man. I mean, and Matt Painter is certainly smart enough to use him that way. Like we are throwing it into him every time. You deal with it, and teams have not dealt with it very well. They can't. He's just too big, too strong, too skilled, and too relentless. Uh, and so I, I take my hat off to him. And it was it was fun afterwards to see him, you know, show some some real emotion because he plays in a pretty stoic manner. But to show some real joy, like everyone else for Purdue, I mean, it was such an emotional scene. Oh my gosh! Afterwards, Robbie Hummel, who was a great Purdue player, who blew his knee out twice. Um, for them, uh, did the radio call for that. And he's a great broadcaster and he's in tears after the game, trying to interview painter, you know, and Gene Katie is on the floor and Edie cuts a piece of the net and put, ties it around Katie's hat. And didn't have and to get on the ladder, didn't, right? Didn't have yeah, to get no, on the yeah, ladder. No. Edie never got on the ladder. He doesn't need, need it. Seven, four. No. But so he Official ties ladder of the nothing. Net, yeah. yeah. Around, around uh, around Katie's hat. And I asked Katie, I said, was that Zach that tied around the hat? He goes, I don't know, but I'm glad I got it. Yeah, I bet you were. <laughs> Didn't have a lot of nets in his day. So good for Gene Katie. Good for all of Purdue. He is. It, it, I love watching them. I know that maybe others don't. Uh, maybe the quote young, you know, young generation that loves the the three pointer and just shoot, shoot, shoot. But it actually watching Purdue play and today. I watched them probably more than than I have all season, and um, it took me back to like my days in college, where I watched basketball, like SEC basketball, and that that's what it always was: was throw it down to the big fellow if he can't get it, and <laughs> throw it back out, and then guess what? Throw it back to him again. Yep, and yep. New I, I, it's like it's like classic, and it's great to watch. It's kind of like to put it in football terms, it's kind of like watching um, a fullback now in football. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. God, they got a fullback. <laughs> you know, there is he's running through the hole. They might even do a dive, you know, and it's it's great. You know, it's it's great for uh, a lot of us to see that, you know, everything, everything goes in cycles. So uh, history in general. Uh, and it's it is it's a blast to uh, to watch them in. Hey, I'm all my only final four team left. By the way, how's your bracket, Dan? How's your bracket? <laughs> well, how are your did, final three? I, I did pick a- Alabama when I had to. And I think I picked Purdue. No, I picked Creighton. Did I picked Creighton. I don't know. Wow. Some of them are still in. UConn I picked. So two. Two two out of four or three, but three plus. I don't <laughs> two know. Out of three. <laughs> two out of two, two out of three <laughs> ain't bad. I don't know. Um uh, the uh yeah, Edie Edie is uh I, I think oh, I think this is part of the reason people really are enjoying the tournament is so the look, the NBA is is vastly superior uh in terms of talent uh skill individual skill complexity of the offenses um every single thing it is better okay um i'm not i'm not making an argument otherwise this is that is how you should play basketball and they have the bre- the brightest coaches and the best athletes in the world playing this sport and they have used analytics to redefine how to play the game it's a little like baseball though just because the analytics say you should take three pointers or dunks and everything else is gone, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the most aesthetically pleasing way to watch basketball. So look, if I was running an NBA, I'm not I'm not arguing go back to the old style, right? Because you would lose every game. And also college basketball doesn't have a bunch of six eleven guys who can drain twenty eight foot three pointers at, at, at this rate. Mm. But there's something about watching classic basketball and i think that's what this this tournament is they're throwing it inside and stuff so i think there's people just like i don't really enjoy baseball when they just their the guys got a one hitter going and they take them out in the fifth inning and everything's matchups and it, it's right. not like yep. it's i i'm not saying it's not the right way to play it's just not as fun for me i'd like to when it was a guy who would try to go eight innings as the starter and and win a game or they would do different things so it, it it's just something that you could pref- you can prefer a less exciting the, the less superior way to play. Also, if you try to play NBA style with college talent, it's going to be a disaster because they're just they're just rocking. They're just going to miss all the three pointers. But I think that is part of the appeal. Is it's like, yeah, it's a little like in college football. Sometimes you want to see 
I think one of Michigan's appeals the last few years is they ran sort of old school football. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just yeah. You can like you can like the spread, you can like the air raid, but sometimes yeah. you want to see let's line up and run this thing. So I think there's appeal to that. Mm-hmm. Sure, absolutely. Like, like no variety is the spice of life, and we have that in college basketball. In the NBA, there's not. I mean, Alabama runs an NBA sort of offense. They it's threes and dunks, right? They uh, are. 19th nationally in percentage of shots that are three pointers. Uh, they play fast as hell. Their offensive tempo is third fastest. They just run and chuck from the outside. I mean, they, they're not just taking indiscriminate shots, but they're they're that's where everything goes. It's layups and it's dunks and it's threes. But then you've got these teams around them in the Final Four playing very differently, and that's that's the thing, and that's where you get a Michigan style. Versus a Washington style in the in the football playoff, oh. uh, you know it's it's great when you have there's so many teams and so many ways to skin the cat depending on your personnel and who you can attract uh, that it's fantastic and I I just think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch and yeah you know uh, good luck to the officials again hmm. who are going to officiate Zach Eady um, he, he leads the nation in fouls drawn. He's a hard dude to referee because, you know, you don't know how much to let go, how much to call. But again, this is what Matt Painter does, and this is what Purdue does. They dictate everything. We are going to play our way. You're going to deal with it. And against UConn, that may finally change. But every single game this tournament and all season, it has been, we're doing things our way. Can you stop us? Uh. Fun Final Four, right? We got two two one seeds, a four seed, and an eleven seed. Uh, some stats from Colin, our producer sent sent us this. Some stats from the Yahoo bracket. Sixty six percent of uh, projected brackets had UConn in the Final Four. Forty three percent had Purdue. Five percent had Alabama, and one point two percent had NC State. Uh, it so yeah, it should be a blast. You got a great kind of Cinderella ish story, even if they are from a power league. Um, and you got this this ED. DJ Burns, great matchup there, and then UConn trying to, you know, repeat. Uh good stuff. Great, great final four and and uh look forward to it. I wanna go to one less went back one more time to Matt Painter real quick. Okay. So Matt Painter, I I think is I'm very happy he made the final four, got that off his back especially after the the losses to St. Peter's and Fairleigh Dickinson. Great, great basketball coach. The fortunes of college basketball. And I, who knows how this really would have played out, but Matt Painter was a really good high school basketball player in Muncie, Indiana. And he played AAU basketball with Pat Knight, Bob Knight's son. And Matt Painter wanted to go to Indiana. He wa- loved Bob Knight, and he wanted to get a scholarship offer to go to Indiana, and Bob Knight saw Matt Painter play more than normal because he would play with his son. And so he'd go to watch his son play, and there was Matt. And the whole time, he waffled. I remember him telling me this before he uh, passed away, when he was still alive, that he almost offered Matt Painter, liked Matt Painter, liked Matt Painter, just never offered him. And Matt Painter was disappointed and went to Purdue and became a a four-year player under Gene Cady and became a, a terrific player for Purdue. And uh, they should have, he should have given him the, the he, should have, he should have offered him as a player. But then he gets into the uh, Gene Cady system. Like he worked for Bruce Weber at Southern Illinois. And then he gets to, per, gets to Purdue, gets, uh, as if he gets named Cady's successor at Purdue. And since 2005, has run a rock solid, really, really good basketball program that's now finally broken through and maybe building to something even bigger than what it was. And in the last whatever many years it's been at Indiana, they've never had that successor to Bob Knight. And I wonder if if Bob Knight offers Matt Painter uh, and, and the way they play the whole thing, it's kind of stolen Indiana's program in a little ways. And you want I just wonder, like, it's like the like the whatever doors opening like if bob knight offers matt painter and matt painter ends up becoming this beloved hoosier 
who's, you know, in-state kid who plays, oh, he's gritty, all that stuff, then ends up being the Indiana coach. What And does he be the guy that could have succeeded Knight um, either immediately or soon after and been that bridge guy that everyone's happy with and would have had the blessing in the whole? I don't know, but it's kind of crazy that it was so close because Indiana would love to have Matt Painter now. Oh, so I, I love that you brought that up. Um, I covered Matt Painter in high school. I saw him play at the Indiana High School All-Star Tryouts. And he made the team. His feet couldn't move. He couldn't guard. That's why Knight didn't offer him. He was slow. But he was so skilled and so smart that he could make up for it because he could pass and he could shoot. And he goes to Purdue and he makes a career out of it. Right? And he is clearly a coach on the floor in terms of just understanding everything. And it was – he. He grew up, absolutely, as you said. He was an Indiana fan. His dad took him to the 1987 Final Four to cheer for the Hoosiers, which they won the championship in New Orleans. I mean, he wanted to go there, and they never got around to offering. And Katie, I, if I remember correctly, because I've talked to Painter about this, you know, that, that, that it was like, you know, their pride was a little bit hurt, and Katie's like, you can sit around and wait for him, but I'm here right here right now. And, and so he, he opted to go with Purdue. And what an absolute program-turning thing. And I will say, look, there's a lot of – basketball coaches, there's a lot of really nice, charming human beings. Not all of them nice, but they're charming, you know, because they're all crazy. Uh, but Painter's a great guy. Like, Rick Barnes is a great guy. Would have been happy for Rick Barnes to go to the Final Four, too. Yeah. But Painter's one of those guys who has handled some terrible defeats, some awful March moments, some of the worst that anybody's ever had with equanimity – with poise, with class, has never been petty, never been bitter, never gotten really angry at anybody. He acknowledges it to himself. Hey, the one common denominator in all of those early NCAA tournament losses was me. Pointed the finger at himself, went back to work, changed the program, made the program better. And so to get this reward, it, it, it's nice to see for a guy like that who is, you know, there, you, you will, you could look, you could probably interview all the other 360 Division One basketball coaches. And if you can find somebody that doesn't like Matt Painter or Rick Barnes, I'd be surprised. Yeah, first uh, first Final Four since, what, for the 80s, right? In the 80s? 1980. 1980. 1980. Wow. Yeah, I was just looking at, like, the track record of of Painter, right? Well, we all know he lost in the first round last year. Year before that, Sweet 16. Year before that, lost in the first round. Uh, he made the Elite Eight in in 2019, but and lost on a the the, the last second sh pass and shot when mm. put it in an overtime against Virginia. That decided mm. kind of who won that championship. Virginia mm. wins. Yeah, Purdue goes home. Yeah, sorry, incredible stuff. No, just just uh, awesome stuff. And they've been so consistent for so many years. I mean, you go back to his first year there, where how he's built the program from <laughs> from nine and nineteen in 2005 six. To, uh, to how he's built the program. And finally, uh, right, uh, almost 20 years, right? 18, 19 years later, he's, he's at the Final Four. Yeah, he's built it up. Great, great job.